So today's video is how to stop the way in madness, how to find peace at the scale. Who wants peace at the scale? I know I sure do, and I certainly did when I was over 250 pounds. I, oh my goodness, I saw the scale as my arch enemy. I dreaded it, I avoided it. When I got on it, I wanted to throw it against the wall. There was definitely no love going on between me and that piece of plastic or that piece of metal. I put off going to the doctor because I didn't want to weigh in at the doctor's office. I dreaded it for days thinking, what was the nurse going to say? What was the doctor going to say? How many people were going to see my chart? So I can definitely relate if you have all of those mixed emotions. So as we get started, tell me in the comments, how are you feeling? I want to ask you some questions. If you can relate to any of these, if you can relate to anything that I'm about to say, just type yes, I can relate in the comments. So these are some things that I personally have done. I'm sharing these because I have done them with the scale. So I've stepped on the scale and then I step back off because I don't like the number that I see. So I step back on again. Has anybody ever done that? Like, well, maybe the first number was wrong. Maybe if I step on again, it'll be better. How about I've stepped off the scale. I didn't like the number that I saw. So I went to the bathroom. I took off some layers of clothes um, and then I got back on again, thinking maybe I would have a better number. Themselves, well, it, you don't like the number that you see. And it must be the soy sauce. It must be because I ate takeout. It must be because I had frozen food and it had so much sodium. And it's not to say there isn't some truth in some of those things, but the reality is if we were continuing to lose fat, we would eventually see that at the scale, right? Have you ever weighed yourself multiple times a day, every day, and freaked out about the changes that you saw, even though you know that it's normal for our bodies to have weight fluctuations, but still you kind of ride the wave of, oh, it's better, oh, it's worse, oh, it's better, oh, it's worse. Can you relate to that? I'm getting lots of yeses in the comments, so I know I'm not the only one. Have you ever played the timeline game? Timeline game, meaning you tell yourself, okay, if I lose two pounds a week starting right now, then by Christmas, I can be this many pounds down. Or maybe you say, oh, okay, well, I've got some birthdays and some holidays in there. Maybe that's not quite realistic. But if I lose a pound and a half between now and then, I'll be this many pounds down. And then if I keep going, then I will get to my goal weight by X date. Have you ever played those timeline games? I know I sure have. How about you see a gain? You step on the scale, you see that you've gained some weight and you think, well, screw this. I worked so hard and I still saw a gain. I'm just gonna go eat whatever I want. And basically use that as an excuse to overeat, to give up, to binge. How about you see your weight stays the same and you think, well, screw this. I worked really hard and I didn't even lose any weight. I'm just gonna go eat whatever I want. Or how about you see a loss and you think, well, I was pretty good this week. So I guess I can get away with treating myself a little bit. And you go and you have a huge splurge meal. Isn't it interesting that with a weight gain, several different types of weight gain, a weight staying the same or a weight loss are our choice is still the same. It's to try to go and eat more. That is actually your toddler voice speaking. And we'll talk more about that at the week one video next week. If you can relate to any of the things I just shared, and so many of you are saying all of the time, yes, 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 all of the above, then tonight's video is for you. I am going to teach you two specific strategies that have been really helpful for me in finding peace with the scale. Now, I will tell you too, this is a process. This is an ongoing process. We are not going to solve all of our um, scale and weight trauma tonight. There's a lot that's wrapped up in that number. There are a lot of expectations that our society puts on us, a lot of expectations that we put on ourselves. So we want to be realistic. But with these two thoughts, I have definitely made some great progress in finding peace with the scale. I keep a post-it note over the numbers on my bathroom scale. And I would encourage you to do this. When this video is over, I want you to go get a post-it note. You can put whatever makes the most sense to you on that post-it note, but it's something that what I want you to do is I want you to say it before you step on the scale, because see, you're not gonna be able to see the number until you move the post-it note, right? So you say it, you take it off, you step on the scale, and then you step off the scale, 
you say it again and you put it back on. So then it's there for you the next time. Very simple, basic, but this has been a very powerful technique for me. So if you want to, you can put my worth is not my weight and you can write that on a post-it note, stick it on your bathroom scale. So then the next time you go to weigh in, whether it's a couple days from now, a week from now, um, when it's at the end of week one, when we all weigh in together for this challenge, you're gonna look at that and you're gonna say, my worth is not my weight. You are a valuable, beautiful person because of who you are, not because of what a number on the scale says. Your weight does not define you. You are a wife, you are a mother, you are a friend, you are a daughter, you are whatever your job is, whatever roles that you have in this life. You are a neighbor, you are a community, um, someone who's important in your community, maybe in your church, um, at your Weight Watchers meetings, you know, wherever you go, you are an important person in this world. And it doesn't have anything to do with what the number on the scale says. Those people who know you, who love you, um, that is not their concern. They're concerned about who you are, the love that you show them, what you do for them. You also are an overcomer. I know that some of you in this um, challenge, actually all of you, I just, just that some of you, I know your stories, are phenomenal. You have overcome some incredibly hard things. In the comments, tell me something really hard that you have overcome lately. It could be something um, food related. It could be totally not food related. Have you overcome cancer? Have you overcome the loss of a loved one? Have you overcome or are dealing with currently arthritis or health issues or um, you know something going on with your spouse or you're a caregiver or your child has special needs? Um, you have overcome some really hard things, financial struggles, um, relationship struggles. Maybe you're estranged from a child or a parent. You have overcome some really, really hard things. That is so much more important about who you are than any number that's on the scale. And that is what I want you to remember. When you look at that post-it note and it says my worth is not my weight or whatever is important to you, look at everything you guys are talking about right here. Um, was a caregiver to my mom and she recently passed. Oh, I'm so sorry. I miss my be best friend, breast cancer survivor, surgery and treatment for melanoma twice. I have rheumatoid arthritis and keep it under control. Thank God. Um, Ladies, look at you, recovering from second major surgery in the last year. You are an overcomer, oh my goodness. You are powerful, you are strong, you are gifted. Um, you know, God has created you for some amazing things in this world. And that's not to say that your weight doesn't matter, it does. Um, there's a reason why we keep track of it. It is valuable information, but it's not who you are. All of these things are telling me about who you are and how strong you are and how you have overcome and how you have persevered. These are the things that really matter about who you are. And that is why your worth is not your weight. Amen. Amen to that. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that was number one. Your worth is not your weight, no matter what. And remind each other of that, would you please? Especially when we do our weigh-ins, um, because the temptation is so strong to compare ourselves to other people, to compare our weight loss progress to other people, to um, feel like what we did wasn't good enough, or you know, be down on ourselves. When you hear other people in this group um, saying some of those things in the comments, would you just give them some love and say, "Hey, friend, your worth is not your weight." You're valuable. You're an amazing person. Um, you know, you're strong. You're resilient. Let's all remind each other of that. We can't, we can't listen. Like those words for me, it just sinks into my soul when I hear that. We can't hear it enough. So that was number one. Your worth is not your weight. Number two, think like a scientist. Type that in the comments. Think like a scientist. Um, I have a video on YouTube and it's something, I'm not going to remember the title right now, but it's something along the lines of like, do you have a drama king or drama queen in your life? And a bunch of people clicked on it. It's just like a one minute video. And um, it's like, oh, heck yeah, you know, my mother-in-law, she is such a drama queen. Not my mother-in-law, but you know, in general, it was actually my mother who isn't alive anymore. But um, you know, like, oh, you know, my sister-in-law, my sister, my boss is such a drama queen. But what the video is actually all about is, is it's actually us 
we're the drama queen or king, and we do it around our weight. We freak out around our weight. We're so high drama about what happens at the scale, right? Otherwise, all those things that we just shared earlier about like stepping on, stepping off, having our way in outfit and going to the bathroom, saying it was the soy sauce. What is all of that? It's drama. We're being drama queens. I'm always like trying to avoid people who are high drama. But yet when it comes to the scale, I can be super high drama. So this is what you want to do instead. And this is something to work on. This is a work in progress. I want you to think like a scientist. The goal with numbers, with weight loss, is to step back, step back from the emotion and look at it like a scientist would. It's just data. It's information. When you get on the scale, it is giving you information. It is one piece of information. It's a valuable piece of information, but it's not the only thing. Um, think of it kind of like when you go to the doctor and he takes your blood pressure. He doesn't go like, oh my goodness, it's blah, 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 blah. He's just more like, hmm, or she is like, um, okay, that's one piece of data. And it's an important piece of data. Your blood pressure is a big deal. If it's like super, super high, that's a problem. If it's super low, that's a problem. So it's not that we want to ignore it. And there are certainly some um, things in our culture right now that almost say like, just ignore your weight, pretend it's not there. Some like body acceptance, body awareness. And I think there can be a place for that, um, especially for people who have certain eating disorders. But as a general rule, I would more rather see you be able to see that number. Again, I don't want to judge anyone who is going down that road, but for me, I feel like there would be some, it would kind of be unhealthy to not be able to look at that number because it's data, it's important information. And like, it's sort of like, I would never want to know what my blood pressure is. Oh no, that was it'd just be so stressful. Um, no, like I would want to know that's, it's important information. It's not the only thing that um, defines me or is important, but like, I need to know what it is. Um, so it's one thing your doctor's taking into consideration. He's not gonna make tons or she have decisions based on one number, but they're not going to ignore that one number either. So I want you to think like a scientist, step back from the drama queen and start to, um, when you find yourself spinning, cause we all do it. That's what I call like when our emotions start to spin, like, oh my gosh, blah, 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 blah. It's like all the emotions are going all over the place. Stop, pause, take a breath, step back. Sometimes I'll even like actually physically step back from the scale. I know that seems a little dramatic, but like there's something about the physical act of doing that that gives me a little bit of space. It's like, Sarah, think like a scientist. So I'm thinking about like, I think it was like three days ago, I'd gotten on the scale and I was up like four pounds from the day before. I mean, I could, and you know, I've, I've been on this, I've been on this train ladies with all of us here. I've been on the weight loss train for a long time. So, um, so those emotions just, they come up because I have years and years of trauma, you know, diet trauma, weight loss trauma, um, doctors judging me and telling me things about who I was because of my weight trauma, um, kids bullying me and making fun of me when I was in school. I mean, I have all the trauma. Um, so of course those emotions will spin. That's not, um, I don't think it means there's anything wrong with me. I think it's normal that that comes up, but I want to do something about it. I don't want to ride the spin. <laughs> I want to step back and with the adult part of me say, okay, it's information and it's one day of information. Yes, I gained four pounds, but you know, if you gain four pounds in a day, chances are good. You're going to lose four pounds because you know, how much body fat can a person really gain in one day? So those are the things that are really helpful when I can step back and think like a scientist, I can take some of the drama out of it. That is my goal for you for this challenge. How can you step back, take a breath, think like a scientist and take the drama out of it? It does not define you. It's not who you are. It's not even necessarily how you did with your food choices. But on the other hand, I would also say it is important data still to look at. I mean, if you are saying I'm tracking, I'm on it, and my calories are good, I'm doing everything I need to do, but I've gained, like if I look at my weight over the last eight weeks, I've seen myself steadily go up or stay the same. Hmm. 
okay, I think it's time to think like a scientist right now. If a scientist was doing a weight loss experiment and they saw that their subjects weren't losing any weight, don't you think they'd do something about it? I mean, depending on the type of study that we're doing here, but you know, if, if you just think about it, it's like, okay, something's off. Is it that I'm not tracking every day? And when I'm not tracking, I'm going off the rails. You know, am I like binging on the weekends, having these huge cheat meals? Am I overeating before bed or in the middle of the night and then, oops, forgetting to track it? Am I, um, are my cal is my calorie goal too high? Um, you know, what is going on? This is where I want to start to think like a scientist. I want to use that data as helpful information not information to shame myself and beat myself up over the head and say I'm no good, not even to put my body down. Like, oh, it's just my metabolism. It's just menopause. It's because I'm getting older. I just turned 50 a few days ago. Obviously, it's because I'm over 50. Can't lose weight anymore. None of those things are true. And even if they do make weight loss harder, which is possible, like repeating them to myself all the time isn't doing me any favors. It's not going to get me any closer to my goal. Um, like we always say, like your excuses are valid, but they're still excuses. You can have an excuse or you can have progress, but you can't have both at the same time. So, um, yeah, somebody just shared, like, am I tracking all the condiments I eat? Um, you know, someone else shared earlier in the group, like weighing out like pretzels or crackers or something. She was amazed at how much more she was actually eating. I will tell you the biggest mistake I see women make is not when they're tracking, it's when they're not tracking. <laughs> Go back in your tracker if you track currently. If not, you will be when we start. And really look at the days that you don't track and or times of day that you don't track. And I can almost guarantee you that is the problem because those are almost always the times that we're eating really high calorie foods. Um, so those are the two, what I see is the most important things with making peace with the scale. That is your worth is not your weight and think like a scientist.